everybody. I'm Cindy Barber. I work here at the uh, Roach Jones Duff House and Garden Museum and we are very pleased to welcome all of you here in support of National Poetry Month and all these excellent young poets who have joined us for the evening. So thank you for being here and, uh, and you'll be able to see this all again at some point on New Bedford Cable Access. It'll be recorded, correct? For future programming. So I'll try to be in touch with everybody so that you get to see when your poets appear on television later. Um, this is a tradition. We've, we've done this particular Voice of Young Poets now for about, I want to say four years, maybe five. Uh, and, it's, and it's always a very exciting evening for me personally. I just am amazed at the observations and the inspiration that these young people have and how they're able to craft words to express their feelings or their ideas so, so well. It's just always amazing. Um, so I hope that you'll be as amazed tonight as, as I always am and really enjoy it too. You can grab a calendar off the front desk as you exit if you'd like to know what's going on here through most of the summertime. The next occasion that we're going to have is AHA Night, May 10th, when uh, the New England governor of the Slow Foods Movement will be here to speak to us about what that means. Her name is Rosemary Melly. She's a, a local woman. Okay. The, the tradition of poetry is not just through the voices of young poets, but this house has seen people who loved literature and loved poetry. Uh, it's, it's sort of a nice way to honor the memories and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the legacy of the Jones family. There were three young girls that were raised in this house and one of them lived here for 82 years. She never left. Her name was Amelia Jones and she and her sisters crafted plays, put on skits, they were musicians. Um, Amelia was an, an amateur actress and very good at it. We happen to have a very small booklet of poems that they wrote in 1860. And this particular poem is at the back of it and it was written by um, Amelia and her older sister Emma. And I just want to read it to you because I think it's fun. <laughs> just to, to honor the idea of continuing poetry in this house. And this is called The Village School, a picture. In the corner sits the dame, her ferrule in her hand. She's sitting in a high-backed chair, in front of her a stand. Before the table stands a class the dame is just about to hear. Her watchfulness cannot prevent one rogue from whispering in another's ear. Near the window stands a girl, a needle trying to thread, whose golden hair with nary a curl falls round her neck and head. Out in the middle of the room, seated on two low stools, are back to back a boy and girl who both have broken rules. The girl is crying, book in hand, a boy, his copy book rolled up. Her arm across her eyes, the boy is standing with a look that shows he never cries. A boy his copy book rolled up, a telescope has made, through which he's looking at the dame and laughing, I'm afraid. Still another, behind his book, an apple slyly eating. For well he knows that if he's seen, he's sure to get a beating. In front, a red-haired boy stands up intent upon his book, nor minds the boy who's tickling him by motion or by look. At one end of the room, a boy and girl seesaw are playing. Their books lie round upon the floor. Their lessons, they're delaying. Books, bags, and bonnets, shawls and caps on the wall are hanging. Some children who are coming in must surely have been lagging. It was written June 30th in 1860 by Emma C. and Amelia H. Jones. So they were about 12 and 10 years old at the time. Close in age to our own, our own friends. Okay, hello, I'm Kristen. I'm gonna be starting out this ritual. Okay, I'm gonna be reading a poem I wrote called The Joker. Silence proves my death, and I don't know if you're guilty or free. Truth is, no one even knows if it is a crime. When we were what we were then, 
Our fathers played cards at the dusty table of what was, and you were the king of hearts. Hiding behind new mask, you are just the somebody I thought I always known, but my allegations are false. My sorrow for what is now became incomplete. Shattering glass added to the shadows which linger in my world, yet you show no guilt. Rhythm like poetry, I had always believed, connected us, and it brought me back to you. But belief wasn't enough to tame old rage. The friend, now the foe in my way. All the memories won't faze you, so I must be weak, because wind can knock me down. I am what I am because you were the piece of me that I can never have. You have changed, and I want nothing more than my old me. If I could stop time, I would, so I can see who I was with you, because you were the first piece of my puzzle, and the one piece I neglected to think of once lost. And now that you are back with different colors, and you are the piece of my past, the broken key to a kingdom, with a village, who had avenue, which branched to a street, to the left, a house, with a basement, right where our fathers meet to set down the cards of my life. And you are the Joker. That's it. Hi, I'm Rebecca Laurentos, and I'll be reading a poem I wrote called A Room. Shades of black, gray, and white, midnight air, no door in sight, no one afraid, nothing can bite, all alone, a single light of hope. And that's it. Hi, I'm Justin Powell, and I'll be reading The Hypocrite. A hypocrite, someone who says one thing and does another, swears he's telling the truth, then lies to his mother. A hypocrite drills himself into a hole and can't seem to find his way out. Easy in, but not easily out, says the lobster in the boiling pot. I was once a hypocrite. The worst part of that was I didn't even know. I beg you, learn from my mistakes. A hypocrite is who I was, but not who I am. So always remember, you can change yourself. My name is Jonathan. I'll be reading I Am Myself, No One Else. My eyes are hazel as a hazelnut. My name is Jonathan. I have a friend, Nathan. I love catch as I, cats as much as I love to hit a ball with a bat. I also love to play sports. I am also not as funny as a cute little bunny. I have a family of bunnies that are really funny. I love to run, it's very fun. I am special and unique, that is me. Hi, I'm Seti Pereira. I'll be reading a poem that's titled Seti. Hello, my name is Seti. I love to eat spaghetti. I like to play soccer and I'm a big talker. My eyes are brown and also round. I like to read a book, especially on my nook. My name is Noah Forg, and I will be reading you Noah. Noah is a name that we all know, a funny guy who likes a show. He's kind and smart and full of fun. He likes to swim, to jump, and run. If you're his friend, then you should know. If you have a party, he is sure to go. He will dance and sing and jerk like crazy. No one will ever call him lazy. Hi, my name is Rianne Dompierre, and my poem is Rain is Music. The pitter-patter of rain against my window, mixed with the sound of the wind, all you hear is this. As a young child, lying in my bed, in my dark and silent room, I have nothing to dread. Most children would be afraid, but I love this sound. The mix of the rain and wind is music to my ears. I get out of my bed and look out the window. I see rain dripping down the window and a small bunny looking up at me. It must be cold and wet, hiding under the bush. The wind goes whoosh, and its long fur moves with the wind. Hello, my name is Mara Pozo, and the name of my poem is Sick Days. Being sick really stinks, runny nose and my toes that had froze. Sneezing and coughing and this fever in my head, oh my gosh, I don't think I'll ever get out of bed. I've used all the tissues to take care of my sinus issues. My medicine cabinet is stocked, but for some reason this, these cold symptoms won't stop. The Vicks vapor in the air still will not bring my head to a clear. Oh dear, I don't think this cold will ever disappear. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I am reading a poem called I Wish I Had Fallen Down the Rabbit Hole. I wish I had fell down the rabbit hole. I really, really do. I'd be with Cheshire Cat and the man with the hat and the two queens, though only one is keen. I'd follow the white rabbit, much like a habit, 
and Dormouse would try to lead, though he'd fall asleep upon a weed. The queen would shout in a pout, off with your head, and then you would be dead. But the king, white queen would stop it before you were a mitt. She would stop the card soldiers with a glass of lard, and then send you on your way, and Tweedledum and Tweedledee would guide you back. Though I wouldn't go. Oh, I wish I had fallen down the rabbit hole. I'm Savannah, and I'm going to be presenting, I'm um, showing you an ode to music. Oh, music, I love the way you pump through my veins, no matter if it's sunny or snowy or even if it rains. I can hear you in my sleep and in the city or at the beach, and you can't escape from me, for you are a part of me. And when you play your sweet lullaby, it comforts me when I cry. Every day I discover something new, new of you, like a paleontologist finds a new part to a fossil. Oh, music I love for you, oh, oh music my love for you is colossal. You are like a spirit all around me, everywhere I go. Oh, music, oh, music, how I love you. For you are not an animal, person, or plant. For you are the are the rhythm I feel in my heart. Oh, music, I love you, and we will never be apart. And my second poem is, What Am I From? What am I from? I am from freshly scented candles, torn up catalogs, and endless rows of plants. I am from left out abandoned toys, flower beds, and trees that have seen everything. I am from barking dogs, houses that have once been lived in, and vandalized graffitied walls. I am from nicknames like Vuka, Nanu, Tefea. I am from I am from Scuscus, Pudding, and Kachupa. I am from unknown family members and Aha Nights. What am I from? I am from kisses and hugs and smiles. I am from tight neighborhoods and museums in my backyard. I am from friends and family. What am I from? I am from New Bedford and my Cape Verdean roots. Um, I'm Trinity and I'll be reading the artist in me. I am an artist. I am a painter. I can paint the most beautiful flower in your least favorite colors and make you love it. And as an artist, I have learned of the grayscale, where the light hits my masterpiece, where my masterpiece shines the brightest. And as that artist, I place myself in this grayscale. You see me in the world as a masterpiece. You see the darkest part of the scale all the way on the opposite side of me. And the lightest, whitest, part on me, the spotlight, the best part of the masterpiece. You see it as me, but I see myself at the darkest part of the part that is not clear enough to see. I see myself rising on the scale, jumping to that light gray. But with my artist self, I know I must go back, back to the darkest point and make sure everything is blended. I cannot jump to that light gray without going to that light black, to the dark gray. I must blend to rise to the spotlight. So you believe I'm at the spotlight, and I believe I'm at the bottom working my way to the top. So who do I believe? My name is Amaya. Family. When you're down, they will turn your frown around. When you're in the dark, they will make a path filled with lights from Central Park. When you're going through rough times, they will make sure they tell you silly rhymes. When you just need someone to give you a smile that brightens up your day, they will be your hero and say hooray. When you have a question on anything, they'll be there for everything. When you have a dream, they will tell you to believe. When you've been gone for more than a day, they wish that you were in bed next to them to lay. When you feel warm and fuzzy in every which way, you know that your family there for you at the end of a very long day. When you feel it's been forever and it's only been a day, you know they there in every which way. Hi, my name is Elena, and I am going to read you a poem called The Mind's Eye. The mind itself makes a life, the eye itself makes a dice. The, 
the mind and I will always stay within the pump and my sway. The mind itself makes me me, the eye itself makes me see. The makings that let me see the moon, the makings that let me think of you soon. Very soon I think of you in my mind's eye. We are very fortunate tonight that we have our poets representing four different schools. Um, they're from Normanda Middle School, St. James, St. John, uh, our neighbor right around the corner. Uh, also from our sister school in the city and coming from Fairhaven, we have St. Joseph's School. So it's really wonderful. It's a nice mix. Every year we, we have a different combinations of schools, so it's always fun to see how, how well it, it goes together. So um, you'll just hold for one more poet. Hello, I am Mariella Caholan, and my poem's title is One of a Kind. My eyes are brown as chestnuts. They sparkle like diamonds. A huge smile covers my face all the time. My hair is a brown sea of curls. My personality and mind are as bright as the sun. I am filled with laughter just waiting to come out. My heart is warm and kind like a warm summer day. I am, I'm like a rainbow, colorful and unique. <laughs> 